We're live. We're live. We're live. All right. What's up, everyone? How's everybody doing? Happy Easter weekend, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, no handouts tonight, everybody. Uh, we're going to... Hey, Sam, what's up? Uh, no PDF tonight, no tabs, uh, more just focusing on just showing you some technique type stuff tonight. Uh, Joe D1, what's up? Sour Steven, excellent. We're going to get to the pinch harmonics, okay? Jim, happy Easter from Canada. Happy, Thanks, Jim. Ian, happy Friday. <laughs> All right. Mark Dree is here again. Welcome, Mark. Hey, how you doing? It's been a while. Mr. Truth of Guitar. The man, Reggie. Happy Easter, my friend. Thanks for jumping on, Jerry. And Elias, of course. Happy Friday, Elias. Victor, Alan. Excellent. TGIF. Indeed. All right, uh, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So tonight, uh, we're going to do a little harmonics workshop. I'm going to talk about some uh, techniques, show you a bunch of stuff. Okay, like I said, it, uh, not really a lot in the way of exer you know, tabbed out exercises, just stuff to kind of mess around with the actual technique. Calvin, welcome back. Good to see you, sir. Uh, excellent. So uh, Peter is here as well. Awesome. Thanks for joining as always. Great. Uh, so harmonics, uh, I'm going to talk about natural harmonics. Uh, where all those, where you can get at all those along the fretboard from Peru, Edgardo. Welcome, sir. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about what's called hard artificial harmonics. So ways to uh, make that harmonic sound uh, in different spots of the neck. Australia in the house, Mick, welcome. Excellent. And then uh, we're, we're going to finish it up with the pick harmonics, the squeals. All right, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Syracuse, Syracuse, James, welcome. Awesome. Uh, got a great turnout tonight. So uh, uh, other thing I wanted to mention, uh, Ottawa, the empty pickle jar in the house from Ottawa. Welcome, sir. Uh, just uh, wanted to mention that uh, we'll probably have a lot of time for questions tonight. I'm going to try not to blow through this stuff and, and go a little bit uh, slow with it. For the benefit of, of uh, for this technique being uh, new to a lot of people. All right, Mr. Daniel in the house, Puerto Rico. Excellent. Thank you, sir. And Anthony from Hong Kong. That's awesome. And from the UK as well. OH, thank you. Welcome, everybody. I'm super uh, excited that you're all here. So we're going to have some time for questions. So just hit me up in the comments. I will get to it the second half of this session. Okay. I'm going to I'll answer any guitar related question or at least attempt to. Martin, how's it going? Welcome. Uh, but we do have uh, Reggie on here who uh, is a guitar master himself. <laughs> so uh, maybe he can jump in to answer questions that perhaps... I might not be able to answer, so we'll see. Uh, James, welcome, first time, excellent. Great, 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 okay. So, well, first of all, what is a harmonic? And you really, uh, it's it's really just a sound, uh, really pretty uh, pinging type of sound that you can get out of your guitar. Uh, did I check about, oh, I did not, Mr. Daniel. I need to make a note of that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Mike from Texas, welcome, sir. Excellent. Uh, it's this kind of pingy sound, right? And uh, if you know where to grab these things, uh, Mr. Daniel, I will make a note to, to check that out. A little bit of black metal there. Misartham. I think that's how you say it. I'm going to check it out. My apologies. I did not get to it yet. Okay, so there's uh, three spots on the neck where what, what are known as har natural harmonics happen uh, quite easily or relatively easily, okay? And uh, so you get these uh, sort of a harp kind of sound out of it. Uh, sounds really cool on a clean guitar. Yeah, Van Halen was, was all about the harmonics. 
Alan. Uh, sounds great on acoustic as well. You can do all this stuff on acoustic, okay? And you can do this with a clean guitar sound or a dirtied up guitar sound. And in fact, the dirtier your sound, the more of these will pop out. Okay, like that. So I just put a little bit of hair on the sound there. And of course, the cleaner you get, the softer it is, but still very pretty. Okay, so how, first of all, what's the technique involved in bringing this out off the guitar, okay? And so I'm gonna demonstrate in sort of where they're the most pronounced is on the tw 12th fret, okay? Those are sort of the easiest ones to get because that's halfway between the bridge and the nut, and it's just naturally occurring. That just seems to be the spot where the, the string can vibrate, evoking these nice harmonics, right? These, these sort of uh, higher sounds, okay? So what we need to do is place your finger not where you would fret on the 12th fret, which is between the two fret wires right there. You're gonna have to move your finger up a little bit towards the bridge, so that it's over top of the fret wire. Okay, so I'm doing this example, 12th fret of the G string, and I'm placing my finger over top that fret wire. And oftentimes what you can do is you can hear that sound, but it dies out very quickly if you're just barely touching the string. But what makes it ring out longer is if you pull the finger off right after you pick and then the string is allowed to vibrate, right? But you can hear it wants to if you're just dampening the string. Glenn, what's up? Welcome. Okay, so. Okay, so you can combine these. Like pick it all at once or rake them, or arpeggiate them. And you see how each time, depending on what I want to do, I'm, I'm lifting that finger off. Okay. Now, if you put too much pressure down there, you'll kind of choke that out. And, and that's really evident here on the fifth fret because these ones are a little bit tougher to get to pop out a little bit. Okay, so if you have too much pressure, you hear it die right away. In the 12th fret, it's so pronounced that you can cut, you know, it's not it's popping out a lot more even though the, the note gets cut off because I'm putting too much pressure on it. You want just ever the lightest pressure that you can put over top of that fret, that fret wire, okay? Very light, like barely touching the string. And you go to pick it and just move the finger off and just experiment with that. Go slow at first and just explore how to get those notes, those notes nice and crisp and clean, okay? And the timing is tricky at first. You're gonna have to experiment with this, okay? You can hold on to it for a little bit, but eventually you'll find the timing where you're able to just touch it and then let it go right away. And they ring out really nice. That's ultimately what we want is to let that ring out nice. All right, so the next most pronounced spot on the fretboard, and I'll come back to the 12th fret in a little bit when I explain what notes are here and how to think about what notes you can get. But the seventh fret, those notes are higher, okay? It turns out that at the 12th fret, Mr. Daniel, yes, it works on drop tunings, absolutely. You'll notice that the harmonic at the 12th fret is the exact same pitch of the note, of the fretted note at the 12th fret. And in fact, that's a really quick way to check your intonation on your guitar, which means, you know, a, a saddle adjustment here can affect whether your guitar is intonated properly. I'll maybe do a session on intonating, although I'm not like a, a super master at it, but, uh, Maybe I'll do one in the future about how to intonate, do some uh, basic kind of stuff. Right on, Andre, excellent. Love it, good stuff. 
Okay, so know that the 12th fret, you can hit a harmonic and let it ring out, and it's the same as the fretted note of whatever string you're at. Okay, I'm getting to it. Sour Steven, we're jumping ahead a little bit, but it's no, it's the same note, but it's up an octave, right? But here, let's go to the seventh fret. This is a case where that's okay, Sour Steven, you're all good. It's the same note, but up an octave. Okay, so if I grab E right here, seventh fret of the, of the A string, play the harmonic, the note is an octave, it sounds an octave up. So that's still an E note, but it's up an octave. Okay? Okay, so you'll find that the seventh fret, yes, it works for nylon strings, Anthony, works on acoustic guitars, okay? So uh, experiment, it's gonna vary from guitar to guitar. And in fact, um, it's a little bit easier to, to make these happen on an electric guitar with a little bit of distortion on it because it'll it'll tend to pop out a little bit more, okay? And it's a, a, it, it's a little tougher to get it going on uh, with the uh, acoustic guitar when you're first working it out. Okay, so just stick with it and it's gonna come. But Great question about the capos, we'll get there, okay? Empty pickle jar coming through with a good one. Okay, so seventh fret, these are your next most available, sort of easiest ones after the 12th fret. These ones tend to pop out nicely as well. And remember, this one is an octave up from the fretted note. Okay, so that brings us to the next spot that is useful for harmonics, which is the fifth fret. So this will give you the fifth an octave higher. So this goes back to uh, what Sour Steven was asking. What are the notes at the fifth fret? And this one's a little trickier to get to pop out, okay? You gotta really have your technique down to get those ringing out nice and clear. Now check it out. If I hit an A on the fifth fret of the low string, I'm gonna get the harmonic, I'm gonna get an E note. So it's a fifth up from the fretted note, okay? so. In this case, D, that's gonna be an A note, okay? And also, uh, for some of you that have been playing for a while, you might remember before the advent of, of clip-on tuners and pedal tuners and everything, uh, a way that we used to tune the guitar actually was with fifth and seventh fret harmonics because the same note would be like, say if you hit the harmonic at the fifth fret of the low string, you've got the same note at the seventh fret of the, of the next string. Of course, it doesn't work from the G to the B string. Is the audio okay? Is it tanking on me? Sounds like there might be a bad echo. Okay, so you can't use it with the uh, B string because it's tuned flat, but... So anyway, used to be able to tune that way. <laughs> okay, cool. Audio is good. Excellent. Okay. All right. So, um, so these are sort of like the three, three main areas for uh, harmonics on the fretboard. And then past the 12th fret, You've got the same ones, okay? So like five frets up from the 12th fret, the 17th fret. And then somewhere around where the, the 24th fret would be, you've got them kind of there, 
right? <laughs> exactly. Just Mike. Oh, sorry, with the B string. Uh, Sophia, I was talking just in terms of how we used to tune the guitar. You could tune like, if your E string was in tune, you could tune the other ones with harmonics because it would be easier to hear like the, the beating in between like this. Check it out. You hear how I can like bring it up to pitch and you can hear how that beating kind of disappears. So what I meant was the fifth fret from the G string harmonic to the seventh fret of the B string harmonic won't work because it's it's a semitone down from where you need it to be. Okay, so you have to do the good old fashioned fourth fret there, like that. Ooh, it sounds out, but okay. That's all I meant by that. <laughs> do harmonics work regardless of the key you're playing in? Um, not always. It depends on what you're doing. Um, generally speaking, you want to try and have them work in the key you're in, Alan. So let's talk a little bit more about that. And then I'll move on to showing some other spots on the fretboard where you can coax out some harmonics. Um, but just talking about these three, there's cool ways to think of these. Okay. So um, one of the first ones is you can kind of reference chords, okay? So for example, uh, that's like sort of a famous song that starts with harmonics. And it ends up being E minor, right? Because you're playing, on the 12th fret, you're playing the same as the fretted notes. So if you think about a triad up here, G, B, E, that makes an E minor triad. If you add that to the root note, which would be an E. Okay. So right away, you've got like, okay, harmonics E minor is up here. Okay. And so if you happen to be like, you know, messing around with something in E minor or on an E minor chord of some top type, right? You can kind of add that sound into it. Exactly, Joe. Right. This is from Roundabout, which... Uh, we have on Guitar Tricks, by the way. I got to teach that one. It was really fun. Okay? Now, another thing to find out here is that you've got this triad up here, which makes a G major. Okay? Right on, Harry. New Zealand. Excellent. We didn't drop out, did we? Are we back? It, it's not saying that I dropped out. We okay? We're still going. <laughs> oh man, I up I upgraded the router as per a lot of your suggestions last week, hoping that was the case with the dropouts. So uh, we're good. Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> All right, excellent. Okay, good. Whew. All right. So think about a G major triad here. Okay, we've got a D note. 12th fret of the D string, 12th fret of the G string is your G note, 12th fret of the B string is your B note. That's a G major triad, okay? So, D, G, and B string. You can play against a G chord or any of those notes, right? Like you could outline it, okay? Now, what's cool is that what the harmonics you find on the 12th string are exactly the same notes as the fifth, I'm sorry, the 12th fret, but an octave up, it's the same notes at the fifth fret, okay? So you still have an E minor triad up here, but it's an octave up, okay, on the fifth fret harmonics. You've still got a G major right there. You hear that? On the fifth fret. So even more thinking about E minor, thinking about G major in the, all those spots. Okay? Cool, right? All right, so now we've got 
the same notes as the seventh fret fretted, but up an octave in the seventh position. So what have we got there? We could do a B minor triad on the top three strings. So if we do the same thing, that's a B note down here, seventh fret. It's just an octave up, right? And then if we do the top three harmonics, that'll form a B minor. And then we've got D major right here. Okay, so. Cool. So a lot of times uh, you can add this sort of stuff in, in your rhythm parts to just kind of embellish, right? Like if you're like. Right, kind of add that in. Very cool. If you know that there's a D major triad right there, you can kind of just throw it in, like kind of over chords, right? Same thing with the G. Um, so uh, what are some of the cool, like you can come up with cool melodies, right? Like, uh, you know, I'm thinking of... Like that, that's a familiar rock song from the 70s, right? Or uh, one of the, like if you add like that kind of embellishment, arpeggiation on a D chord, okay? <laughs> you got it, Eddie, <laughs> right on. So you add the sus4 onto a D chord and so you can, you have it right here. Minor nine harmonics. What about it? I don't know. What about it? Okay. So very cool. So anyway, you can uh, just experiment with this and try to make them, you know, it goes back to like, you know, is the aim to sort of uh, play in the key or and yeah, most of the time it is. Sometimes you just want the sound and it doesn't matter, right? Like you kind of that sort of thing, right? But yeah, Big Ben or NBC, right? Those are the intervals. <laughs> anyway, um, here's another one. That kind of stuff, right? That pinging sound. Anyway, naturally occurring harmonics, you're, you're gonna find them pop out the most easily at the 12th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret, okay? And of course, this works for finger picking too. You don't even need to pick this stuff, right? You can finger pick it too, okay? For a different, different kind of sound. Right on? Cool, okay. So just to add into this a little bit more is, <laughs> yeah, Peter grabbed it there. That's it. <laughs> that sort of sound does sound white snakey a little bit, right? <laughs> that uh, sort of a half step. You're doing these notes basically with harmonics. It sounds really good, kind of ringing out together a little bit. All right. Yes, this is is this love, I think it is, right? Okay, so if you add some distortion, which I recommend when you're trying to find some other spots for this stuff, um, you can, the fourth fret is pretty good. Uh, the ninth fret. Notice they're the exact same notes at the ninth fret and the fourth fret. And then Eddie Van Halen, he would grab sometimes the middle of the third fret on the G string. That, those ones are tricky. You get kind of hot, uh, pretty high tones out of that. <clears throat> so let me show you a little bit uh, how Eddie would would kind of. Oh. doesn't screw in. I got confused there for a second. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's me. String 78. Sorry, man. 
Okay, so Eddie would do the... Uh, he loved the fifth fret harmonic, going from the D string. Okay. To the G string, fifth fret harmonic. And then he would try to find something in the, th in the middle of the third fret and do the... Okay. So... <laughs> All right. So uh, now let's move on a little bit and talk about something else Eddie did a lot of us, but he wasn't the only one. But there is a way that you can access fretted note harmonics. Okay. Uh, James has a good question here. Is the technique essentially a pull off to get the harmonic? It's not quite a pull off because we're not actually fretting anything. Okay, we're just positioning the finger, just lightly touching the string over top the fret wire and then pulling the finger off. So you're not really pulling anything. You're just removing the finger from the string, from dampening the string, basically. Okay. Okay. Now, what Eddie would do is uh, one of the first things he did was to tap out chords, fretted notes. So he found out that you can basically, and just like a capo, I know this, this question is asking about what happens with the uh, capo. Uh, how does that affect the harmonics? It just shifts the naturally occurring harmonics basically, okay? Because you're, you're changing the length of the string, right? So it changes where those harmonics are, okay? <laughs> but, uh, but what you can do is, uh, let's say this A major triad. All right, we'll do it here. A major triad right here. So second fret of the D, G, and B. Eddie found out that you could tap 12 frets up. And you're just basically tapping, like just the lightest tap on the fret wire. It has to be on the fret wire. So, really cool. So if I just take one note, second fret of the G string, four, at the 14th fret, if I just tap, and I don't have to do a lot of force on it, just like, kind of just like really quickly, tap on the 14th fret, which is 12 frets above, you can get that note to ping out, okay? Now, if I go up seven frets up, which would be the ninth fret, I will get what is, what would be the seventh fret harmonic against it. Fifth fret, fourth fret. Okay. So it works great for single notes. Okay. So Eddie did something like this. He would go. There's a, there's, I'm on the seventh fret, right? You do uh, 12 frets up, you get the octave, right? Then on the 14th fret, which is seven frets up, then five frets up. So he turned that into like one, one of these things from his live thing. Or... That kind of thing, okay? <laughs> That's how he did it. And I'm not gonna get into the bass sort of tapping thing because that's a tapping sort of technique. And I'm not very good at it. For the Mean Streets thing, he's incorporating a totally different technique into that. But then he's using harmonics. Like he's tap harmonicing, but he's using like the bass slapping thing, which is, I'm not any good at that, but. Okay, Eddie would do a bend, right? And he would hit a tap up top. So, okay. 
and then bring the tap down. He would do stuff like that all the time. And then the last thing, and before I answer some of these questions, um, like tapping up and doing chords, like he would use one finger to hit either this triad, right? Which, okay, let's say this is an E on the D, G, and B, ninth fret. That's an E triad, right? Going to a B triad, which is seventh, eight, uh, ninth, eighth, and seventh fret. And then down to an A, and he would tap it. So actually, like uh, the diagonal one finger tap was actually pretty, pretty ingenious to get those together, right? Like you just hit it diagonally. Okay, and you, so you can arpeggiate like. Or just hit the chord all at once. Anyway, that's how he did all that stuff. Dance the night away, exactly. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at, on the acoustic, how all this stuff can happen, okay? Because we had a request for that, okay? So they're all right there, okay? Uh, now, like I said, the harmonics tend to really pop out if you've got like a crunch sound on your electric, okay? That'll really amplify it and really bring it out front. It's a lot more delicate on the acoustic, but they are there, right? <laughs> right, that kind of stuff. But yeah, you can do all this like, They're all there, okay? Thank you, thanks, Peter. <laughs> but they're all in there, but it, you know, it's a little bit harder. Like there's a lot less room for error to get it really clean and good on the acoustic guitar, okay? So, uh, but they're there. All of these harmonics live there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the capo too. Well, the capo is essentially the same thing as if you were, uh, you know, let's put it on the third fret. I, you know, I guess it would be right. So instead of the seventh fret, we've got the tenth fret. So basically, the location of those natural harmonics shift up the fretboard. So that what would be the twelfth fret is going to be up here at the fifteenth fret, and then the tenth fret, and then eighth fret. Okay, so that's how it works with the capo because again, it's it's like the physics of it, right? You're, sh you're shortening the length of it, and those harmonics are located somewhere. There's like distances involved and all that. I, I think we had a couple comments about the physics of it all, um, but yeah. So, all right. So I want to show you something else that uh, I'm definitely not exactly a master of, but you know who is a, a really uh, uh, really good at this on guitar tricks is Anders. Uh, who does the acoustic course, and I'm sure that he's got some stuff on this. So there's another way, instead of tapping to get those harmonics to pop out, there's a technique where you can pluck this. So what you do is you take your finger and you position it to the fret you want to have the harmonic on, and then you use your thumb to pluck the string behind it. I don't know if you can kind of see what's going on there. You see, I'm using, my, I've got my finger on the 14th fret. And then as you, you pluck the string and then you pull your finger off. MKA Melt, welcome. Good to see you, you made it. What is the art, artificial harmonic? Well, this is an example of the artificial harmonic, okay? Um, where you're making harmonics happen not in the natural spots, okay? 
the natural harmonics, all you have to do is just put your finger on the, on the string lightly and then pull it off in certain spots, okay? Yeah, absolutely, okay? But see, I can kind of get it, but I, I haven't really practiced this that much, but it's some guys get it really, I mean, just super seamless and really nice sounding. Um, yeah, you can do this on the on the electric as well. Let's see. Get it to pop out a bit. Not very good at it. There, there's not as much room to do that on the on the electric because the strings are closer together, so it's a little tougher. But uh... okay. Pretty cool stuff. So that is the plucking harmonic technique. Okay, they might have. Yeah, uh, I mean, there, there's no shortage of uh, guitar players uh, out there that can, uh, you know, blow your mind with this kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, just another another technique and another alternative, a little more uh, sort of precise and and finessed uh, way to get those harmonics popping up. So, all right, so let's talk about the uh, pinch harmonics, the squeals, the artificial harmonics with the pick, okay? So this technique works really well with, this, with crunch, but you can still get it to go even with the acoustic, although it's, it's a little bit uh, tougher. I mean, it really pops out. right? It really pops out when you've got a crunch sound, okay? So it's why the metal guys love to do those squeals like on and that kind of stuff, right? So what are we talking about here? On your pick, what's basically happening is that you are creating, <laughs> it does, Mr. Daniel, indeed. You are sort of combining the original note, and it's almost like you're... you're you're tapping those artificial harmonics where you're picking. And the way you got you have to do it is you have to pick and then add just a little, sim, almost simultaneously, like right after, add a little bit of flesh from your thumb. So you have to choke up on your pick a little bit to get this going. Okay, so if you're not choked up enough, right, it's just going to be normal. But if you turn, what I find you know, like in addition to, to uh, choking up on the pick a little bit is to just sort of twist my wrist a little bit. You see how I turn my wrist out a little bit? And now that thumb is really on the string with the pick. And I'm not, I'm not fretting anything, but you can hear all the different, all your harmonic type sounds as you cross the string. Exactly, ZZ Top, right? So, so the way to practice this is to go fifth fret of the G string. Okay, and uh, the, the Billy Gibbons way is to give it a little bit of a blues bend, right? And what's cool is that different picking spots along the, the pickups give you different tones, right? Okay, let's see if I can get it going on the acoustic because it should work. And even if you're not like getting a really clean, like, you know, super high note coming out, like a lot of the metal guys, it's definitely an expressive thing that you can add in to really add some texture and personality, right? That's what sort of what Billy's doing with that, you know, when he adds the squeals in. A lot of times he's not like squealing a super clean high note coming out. It's just sort of a sound where it's sort of half and half. You can kind of hear it on the, on the acoustic, right? It helps to have a, a, a heavier pick for this too. Although it'll work with a lighter pick. Let's try a lighter one here. Sour Steven's got a great thing, uh, great tip. 
to experiment with just like the angle that you're coming in on it too. Like, you know how I kind of like push my hand out that I fan it out a little bit, but you can also like kind of twist your hand a little bit and get some different results. So that's a great tip there. Um, Donnie, I don't think there's really a optimum pick pickup setting that works best with the harmonic technique. It's just going to be a different sound depending on what uh, pickup you have selected. It really has more to do with just how you're hitting the string and where you're fretting. <laughs> so yeah, you can get it going here. It's really hard to get them to pop out on, on the acoustic, but it's kind of fun to just kind of add it in if you're, you know. Right? Like it kind of really dropped in volume when I did that on the acoustic, but it kind of adds a little bit of an expressive thing, right? So definitely well worth the uh, well worth the effort to try and get it under your fingers. To do different gauges affect the harmonics? It might, it might. I haven't actually done a study on that, but it sounds like it might have something, it might have a little bit of an effect as to whether they pop out or not. So uh, that's a really good question. Chad, I don't know a definitive answer on that. Um, but, you know, Eddie and Billy Gibbons use really light strings and the metal guys use super heavy strings because, you know, because a lot of the new metal guys are like tuned down to like C, B or even lower. And they're like doing crazy pick harmonics too. So you can still get them. Uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly the ins and outs of how, e how much easier it is or how it affects getting those harmonics, but uh, I know you can definitely get it to happen with that. <laughs> might be, e yeah, it might be easier to grab them, uh, to pick them with a bigger string, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, like Satriani, Satriani would just go to an open string and, and use a pick harmonic and then pull up, I don't have a bar that goes all the way up like his, but that's how he got his harmonics. He would dip it and like do a pick harmonic. <laughs> that's the way he does it there. So lots of different ways that you can make it happen. But uh, anyway, so that's pretty much all I had on harmonics. I think there's a lot of stuff there, hopefully, to uh, experiment with. Feel free. I mean, these videos stay up on YouTube after it's we're finished with the live things. So, uh, you know, always check in and kind of have a little review on it anytime. Um, but yeah, these are just a great uh, technique to, uh, you know, kind of get under the fingers a little bit. And, you know, it, the more sort of songs you learn, you'll start to see people using these harmonics to great effect, great embellishment, uh, great texture to add in. Uh, what effect will compression compression have to bring these out? Sour Steven, that's a good question. It will help. So if, if you imagine, like, if you think about, I've been talking about crunch, like a crunch setting or a distorted setting on an electric guitar really brings this stuff out. A compressor will totally have the same effect on a cleaner sound. Okay, so uh, definitely experiment with that, particularly on a cleaner sound. If you're having trouble getting harmonics to pop out on a cleaner sound, compression will totally help with that. Uh, 13s, man, Terry, <laughs> Phil Collin, he's the man. Love me some Def Leppard, love some Phil Collin. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm going to switch over to some questions. Please forgive me. I'm going to kind of uh, just backing up a little bit. I think we discussed the capos affecting it. Does it work for nylon string guitars? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so we talked about, you know, if you want those harmonics to really, you know, pinch harmonics, not so much as far as playing in the key. It's just more of an effect you're adding to a note. But... Any of these kind of uh, art, you know, tap harmonics or naturally occurring harmonics, we definitely want to think about what chords are happening, what key we're in, and uh, that's where they work the best. Is if you're sort of playing with the chords, okay? 
Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this one, Hayden, how often does Guitar Tricks add new songs to learn? Usually every week. Uh, it's usually at least one a week. And I've seen sometimes I've seen a couple a week go up. Um, so, yeah, they're always adding new content, uh, particularly new song tutorials. So and they are still committed to that, even though we lost some uh, big songs at the end of last month, which was unfortunate. So we lost a bunch, but uh, we will still be working towards adding uh, more songs. Yes, Sour Steven, never thought I'd, I've never thought about the triads on the strings using harmonics, world of possibilities. Absolutely. Um, for melodies and also just for chord stuff, right? Like just, just thinking about that. I like adding, like adding some fretted notes with harmonics, right? Like Eddie would... Maybe something like that, right? Where you're doing like harmonics on the top. Got an A, a major. <laughs> that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, yeah, think about, you know, I was... And then if I had it tuned out to D, I'd hit that. Anyway, uh, yes, melodies, triads, try to play with the chords. Uh, Spiderweb has great squ squeals. What is that? No doubt. I think so. <laughs> I think it was part of the riff, right? <laughs> um, what else we got? Yeah, so we're talking a little bit about uh, the math of harmonics, which I'm not going to get into but it's definitely interesting if you're into that kind of thing. 12, from, 12 frets up from where your hand, yeah. Uh, you can demonstrate on the acoustic. Excellent, I apologize guys, just making my way through it. I wanna make sure I got all the questions so far. Excellent, excellent. They also have the course by Dave Salantano, Van Halen Artist Study. Yes, so we so he's going to talk about a little bit of that stuff as well. Excellent. Good, good, good. Violet Cold. Okay, another atmospheric black metal. You got to check it out, Mr. Daniel. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Andre, so just to confirm, fifth fret harmonic sounds an octave plus a fifth higher. Yes. It's actually, uh, so it's actually an octave, it's sort of like the fifth and then an octave higher. That's right. So it would be like, so here's an A, right? The fret, uh, the harmonic there is E, but it's an octave up. It's that one. So yeah, it's whatever the note is on the fifth fret, but it's the fifth of it and then an octave higher above that. Okay. There you go. What do you mean you lost songs, Joseph? Uh, yeah, we uh, Guitar Tricks had to pull down a, a number of song tutorials at the end of March because they lost, they weren't able to renew them, uh, the licensing deals. And I'm not really privy to what exactly went down, but I can only speculate that uh, publishers wanted a lot of money <laughs> to keep it on there. So they had, you know, they did everything they could, rest assured, they did everything they could to keep those songs on the site, but in the end, they just could not do it. So unfortunately we lost, uh, you know, we lost The Who, Prince and Boston. And there was a bunch of other ones that we lost, unfortunately. Yeah. But, uh, but we got more coming. <laughs> uh, Eddie G. I don't seem to get the harmonics on fret 12. I get them on the frets below and above though. Yes. You want to make sure that on the 12th fret, you're above the fret wire and not in the middle of the, where you, where you would press the fret, right? 
you want to be on top of the fret wire, very light, very light finger on top, just dampening the string ever so slightly and then lift it off after you pick it or finger pick it or whatever, okay? Uh, <laughs> guitar face helps with the harmonics, absolutely. Uh, Jerry, I finished Fundamentals 1 and 2 and Acoustic 1. Where should I go next? Uh, learn songs. Um, if, if you're not already learning songs, that's probably where you need to go next, is just start learning songs, as many as you can, songs that you're into, and just find tabs, find video lessons. We've got lots on guitar tricks, but if you have to go beyond, do it. Um, songs is where it's at. Okay, because it's really going to just reinforce everything that you just learned in fundamentals and acoustics. You're going to start to make even stronger connections to the techniques that you're learning, the theory you're learning, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, go to songs. That's my advice. Oh, yeah, Peter, that's right. Uh, Pearl Jam, we lost Pearl Jam too. And who else? We lost another 90s band i feel like grunge band any suggestions for songs that would be good to practice harmonics for relative beginners ian man uh that is a tough one that that is one thing that i did not think about before doing this session so i apologize i don't have any on the top of my fingers uh Peter said, White Snake, it's on gt as well um is this love I, i'm not sure how much of a beginner's song that is but the harmonic parts are in fact really straightforward in that song that white snake song um i can't think of really any you know sort of the intro of uh roundabout just uses that harmonic which is good um one step closer yeah oh yeah andre that's it yeah 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 lincoln park lincoln park one step closer has got harmonics in the riff yeah 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 Barracuda, there's another one. Terry, you guys are saving me tonight. I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, Barracuda, all over Barracuda is using harmonics. Good one. Terry, that was a good one. Uh, Soundgarden, I can't think of Soundgarden it would be. Oh, we lost Soundgarden. That was it, Sour Steven. Did we lose Soundgarden? I think we did. Oh, H, yes, definitely. Uh, learning the who before it disappeared. I mean, you know, there's sort of likening to, you know, how sometimes stuff goes off of Netflix after a while. It's for the same reason. It's just licensing terms and agreements and all that kind of stuff. So it's unfortunate. <clears throat> Sour Steven, I appreciate your time. I Well, thanks so much. I appreciate you guys joining and getting something out of it. Hopefully, I really, I super appreciate that. Um, even tried on a 12 string Glenn. Yes. This totally works on 12 string guitars. Okay. So go for it. It's awesome. Uh, Jeff says been with guitar tricks since 2012. Never been disappointed with the song selection. Well, we super appreciate that. We're still going to be adding stuff. In fact, we're working on rush songs right now, <laughs> and, but there's tons of other stuff in the pipeline and it's, it'll be coming soon. So it's just sort of disappointing that we lost some, uh, you know, a, you know, pretty good list of songs this time, but we will work really hard to uh, replace them with cool other songs. Didn't know you had to pay for the rights to teach songs. Yeah, Joseph, it's sort of, I wish it wasn't the case. It's sort of a gray area, but, uh, you know, guitar tricks felt really strongly in the beginning when they wanted to teach song tutorials. They wanted to be as legit as possible. So they went to the publishers and cut deals with them. OK, and I know that a lot of those songs that went missing off guitar tricks, you can find on YouTube for people teaching the songs and they're not pulled, which is really frustrating. Um, but what are you going to do? They're trying to do it the right way here. You know, like they're just trying to pay for it and have it be as legit as possible. There's the whole argument with fair use for teaching purposes, but I guess there's a gray area there. I'm not a lawyer, so I can't really answer that as well. Uh, are bands like Dark Throne, Dissection, Gorgoth, are they available on Guitar Tricks? Unfortunately, no. Mr. Daniel, I don't think we we have very much in the way of black metal. Um, sort of a very niche 
<laughs> genre. So uh, I don't think so, sir. Uh, excellent. Peter the Who, Soundgarden, Heart Barracuda, crowdsourcing for the win. <laughs> yes. Uh, there we go. Cool. Thank you, Anthony, for Whiskey River. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That's a good one. Excellent. Uh, so how do we do? Like I dropped out another time here. That's really frustrating, but at least I didn't lose the stream, which is a huge win. Although I'm knocking on wood right now so that it doesn't happen. Uh, pinch harmonics are addictive. Bob, absolutely. When you start getting it happening, it's really fun to play. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Ian, for that. Song selection and presentation are excellent. Well, we super appreciate it. Joseph, Guitar Tricks is the best. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Dark Throne. Oh, my goodness. Really getting into the... Uh, I mean, Dark Throne's one of the originals, right? <laughs> Original sw Scandinavian dark black metal. Uh, Longtime member of GT. Keep it up. Uh, we appreciate that, King50. Thank you so much. <laughs> You managed to get a hold of some of the songs before they went missing. Good work. All right. No drops for you guys. Huh, good. Okay, well, some people had dropouts, but it sounds like everything was pretty much straight ahead for most of you, so I am thankful for that. Excellent. Great. Great, great. Uh, Glenn, actually, I'm going to write that down. So uh, I do take suggestions for future classes. Uh, we could do a little bit of a slide guitar thing for sure. Maybe we'll do that next week. Uh, the hour does go way too fast. Glenn, where does it go? Uh, I'm actually surprised how quickly this one went, but uh, yes. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody. We still got a couple minutes. If, uh, if you have any other quick questions, I'm happy to do my best. But yeah, maybe next week we'll do some slide and uh, talk a little bit about slide technique and, and some maybe some cool riffs and licks. That'll be a good one. Okay. Next week we'll do slide. Well, thanks for the, uh, you know, I always actually need suggestions for these things. So I super appreciate any ideas for that. Uh, so that'll be good. We'll do that. <laughs> Ian, wish we could tip me. All right. Well, I'm going to get GT to get the tip jar going or the, the super chat or whatever. <laughs> that would be awesome. Chad Miller, it's my fourth stream, been with them for six months. Awesome. Welcome aboard. I hope it's going well, and thanks so much for tuning in. Andre, excellent. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, Elias, new Made Easy songs. We're working on it. Tre rest assured, we're working on it for sure. Uh, what's next week, Sour Steven? Well, it sounds like maybe we'll do some slide next week, so we'll explore some slide stuff, okay? Uh, right on, Glenn. Right on, John. Thank you. Sliding technique is available for black metal music as well, Mr. Daniel. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. There you go. Yeah, if you want to learn a song, Peter, I'm, I'm down for that too. We can teach some stuff. We'll see how quickly YouTube's uh, algorithms shut us down. <laughs> I heard that they can be pretty quick if it recognizes some uh, music they can shut you down pretty quick. So uh, <laughs> it's a slippery slope. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Glenn, have a great Easter back at you. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out, Elias. Thanks, Anthony. We'll see you next week for sure. Absolutely. Chad, it's like, it's pretty crazy time for guitar right now, isn't it? Like, uh, it's been s such a positive thing, for, you know, and just like just the craziest last year for sure. So uh, I'm glad that we're able to do this. Um, I'm glad that there's so many people picking up the guitar for the first time and, and really working on it. It's that's just awesome. So <laughs> right on after a 20 year break, you're back. Well, welcome back. That's awesome. Sour Steven, do I play in a band? Well, uh, um, not currently. 
I'm hoping to get something going here uh, post COVID. Um, I did have a band that we've been doing quarantine videos with. If you guys are interested in checking it out, I will, I will put it right here. Uh, you can search it on YouTube. We've been doing quarantine videos, but the band is called 24 unity. Um, it's sort of like a rush meets, uh, we're kind of like rush meets eighties rock meets nineties rock meets maybe seventies rock even kind of thing. So we got a few songs on there and we did a Van Halen tribute a while, a while back. So, uh, check it out. Um, it's up there and, uh, I'm doing my parts from this very spot in the videos. So, uh, check it out. Terry Hayes, all the best to you and your family. Well, thanks so much. I super appreciate it. Right back at you for Easter. Uh, do I sing? Uh, not very well, no. I'm, I'm not much of a singer, although I can kind of do backups sometimes, but uh, not much of a lead singer. Yes, Elias, the uh, New York Times article, I did read that, actually. It's been a pretty crazy thing, for sure. <laughs> Right on. Do I sing on the band? No, I do not. Well, I, can't, I do some backups for that particular band. Anyway, right on, everybody. Okay, that brings us to the end. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I hope to see you again same time next week. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. Stay safe, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Take care. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Take care. <laughs>